Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. For unit one, the practical demonstration allotted to you is observation and suggestion. The term observation has already been explained to you during your class hours. And suggestion is something which we already know in our in maybe in our layman term, but we may extend our learning in today's class. Observation is an act which helps us have knowledge of the environment. It is a careful examination of a phenomena. Although the ability to observe is widespread, scientific observation differs from ordinary observation. Scientific observation is a systematic and goal directed, whereas ordinary observation may be casual and person may not attend to details. The next term here is suggestion. As suggestion as defined by English and English in 1958 goes as follows. It is a process by which one person without argument, command or curation directly indicates another to act in a given way or accept a given belief, opinion or a plan of action. A simple explanation goes this way. You are sitting in the online class. I ask you to open your book. This is a suggestion given by me. So my suggestion can affect your action. You may then either decide to follow it or not decide to follow it. Okay, so this is what is a suggestion. Suggestion is a statement or an opinion shared by the one person and that can affect the other person. So in this experiment, we are trying to see if suggestion can affect the accuracy of report. So the method, all the experiments in psychology will have a methodology. Methodology is the, in simple term, is the process in which the N experiment is done. So under all the methodologies, there are specific pointers, which includes problem, hypothesis, plan, variables, and so on. For this particular experiment, the problem statement goes as follows. To study the effect of suggestion on the accuracy of report. So as an explanation, I would say that we are in this experiment, we are trying to see if suggestion given can affect the accuracy of report given by the subject or the client. Then comes hypothesis. Hypothesis is a tentative statement which is either proved or disproved at the end of the experiment. So the statement for this experiment is suggestion reduces the accuracy of report. So this is a simple statement which we are going to either prove or disprove for a particular subject at the end of the experiment. Then comes plan. Plan as the term says talks about how we are going to do the experiment. This plan statement here is expose a picture for 60 seconds, compare the number of correct answers for two types of questions, suggestive questions and non-suggestive questions. So in simple terms, we are going to expose the client or the subject or the participant, whatever you call it, for the, uh, we are going to expose the picture for 60 seconds, then take away the picture. Then we are going to ask questions to the client or the participant under two separate categories, suggestive questions and non-suggestive questions. Suggestive questions will have 10 questions and non-suggestive questions will have 10 questions. So this is how it is divided. Then comes variables, independent variable and dependent variable. The definition of independent and dependent variable has already been discussed during your theory class. So in this experiment, independent variable talks about the nature of the independent independent way. Independent variable for this experiment is the nature of questions, suggestive or non-suggestive. Here, the experimenter or is decides whether the question, what kind of question is given to the client either suggestive questions or non-suggestive questions both of it will be given but the nature of but the sequence of it or the control of it is decided by the experimenter so therefore it is independent variable then comes dependent variable 
that talks about the statement given under dependent variable is accuracy of report for suggestive and non-suggestive questions. The number of correct answer given under both these categories comes under dependent variable. The next topic under the methodology is experimental controls. What kind of controls as an experimenter I am doing so that I get a very structured environment for my experiment. So here are a few controls taken up by the experimenter before the experiment starts. First pointer is non-suggestive questions should be direct and refer to the item in the picture. So the non-suggestive questions given in this uh, experiment should be so, so that it is very directly referring to the image in the picture. So if I give an image with a tree, the question for non-suggestive will be, was there a tree? Yes or no? So that is very direct and there is no uh, further questioning possible for this particular kind or category. Next one is suggestive questions. What should be the nature of suggestive questions? It should be misleading, very importantly misleading, so that uh, so as to make the subject accept what is there and not there. Uh, so if I give an image of a scenery and ask uh, the color of the tree was black. Is it true or false? So uh, the tree may be of a different color, but my question uh, like whether the tree like the tree was black in color may be true or may not be true but somewhere through my questions I am suggesting so the suggestive questions are designed in this manner then comes answer to the next point under experimental control is answer to the question must be in one or two lines both in suggestive and non-suggestive categories the answer shouldn't be descriptive it is very close and uh, it is very uh, very narrowed down answers so the answers expect, uh, expected for both in, in non suggestive and suggestive questions are very narrow and very specific so that makes the uh, non suggestive questions different from suggestive questions and uh, that makes the experiment more give more accurate results so we have to decide the ex, uh, the non suggestive questions and suggestive questions in such a manner so that the answer to it is either one word or two word the next and the most important experimental control is the subject shouldn't know the aim of the experiment the subject shouldn't know that we are trying to see whether suggestion affects the reporting or not because if the subject knows already what you are trying to study that can affect the responses given by the subject. Then comes materials required for this experiment. Uh, the first, as discussed, we need a picture with the which has been molded in a cardboard with a cover flap. Cover flap is important so that we can measure, like yeah, we know from what time to what time the image is exposed to the client. So yeah, so it's better the image is covered and we open it only when we want the client or the subject to see it. The next material here is list of uh, questions, uh, specifically 20 questions, 10 suggestive questions and 10 non-suggestive questions. Uh, this experiment has already pre-decided the 10 suggestive and, non -ten, uh, and 10 non-suggestive questions, which will be shared to you in a separate document in your uh, LMS. Then comes the answer key. So we just can't decide the questions. So you also need answer keys. So that will also be, that is also one of the important material required. And then comes stop clock because we are trying to measure how uh, the time duration given to the client uh, to see the image. After materials comes the procedure, how we are doing the experiment. So uh, under procedure, it goes like this. The subject is seated comfortably before a table on which the picture covered with a flap is present. The subject is instructed to be ready to observe the picture when it is exposed. 
with the signal start expose the picture and start the stop clock simultaneously after the lapse of 60 seconds give the signal stop and withdraw the picture then present the list of 20 questions to obtain response for each find the number of correct answer with the help of answer key it is as simple as like you are showing a picture for 60 seconds closing the picture then giving the questions taking the answer that's it that is the simple procedure for the experiment then comes instructions very like um, in an experimental setting we give instructions to the client uh, it is given below with the signal i speak like this with the signal start i will present a picture for a brief period of time observe the picture carefully as you will have to answer some questions with regard to the picture after i say stop so this give this statement itself gives the client an idea that uh, okay i need to be very mindful when i am looking at the picture so it's very important that we give the instruction as accurately as possible then comes analysis of data so uh, analysis of data happens after we collect the responses from the subject you remember 20 questions were given to the client verbally and uh, like um, uh, or like uh, we, uh, we are give the questions verbally and the client can either note it down or report to you depending on the situation the client is in if you are doing it in a uh, in a group of two then it's better the client writes it down but if you are doing one on one the client can choose either to verbally inform you the answer or they can choose to write it down so uh, after the data or responses are collected the analysis of data happens under analysis of data uh first point talks about find the number of correct responses for suggestive and non-suggestive category so under suggestive category how many uh, correct answer was given by the client and un under non-suggestive category how many correct answers was given has to be correctly recorded then okay that is a very simple thing if we are doing a group data which we are not actually doing right now group data if we are like uh, suppose we are doing it in a classroom for example bajp uh, english a so we want to see how whether your suggestion affects your report so if you are doing it in the entire group then the second pointer will come into picture where we calculate the mean and the range of group data so which we are not doing right now we are only focusing on the first point and after analysis of data what we are going to mainly discuss discuss whether the subject is influenced by suggestion so we have to prove the hypothesis as discussed previously at the end of the experiment if we are doing group data we also need to see if there are individual differences in the group so we are not doing that right now so yeah we'll just stop it there so yeah we'll just start with the experiment So with the signal start, uh, I can just continue. Uh, you can just look at the picture, uh, and please note at the end of the experiment, you need to answer the question. So observe the picture as carefully as possible. Okay. So assuming that sixty seconds are over, now I am giving questions questions like there are there were seven sheep in the picture so this is an example of a suggestive question so you can either say yes or no if you say yes then my uh, then it is a wrong answer because there are no seven sheep there are just four sheep so like that there are specific questions designed to under two categories suggestive and non suggestive so total number of correct response for each of the categories are collected and mentioned here in this table so this is a tentative data for one of the clients who did the experiment for under so, so the, for the client what happened is under suggestive category the client responded five and under non-suggestive category the correct responses was given was six so yeah i assume till here you are clear then we have to calculate the difference so for calculating the difference we deducted non suggestive questions the non suggestive uh, correct answers from suggestive one the difference is one so we have to calculate this table when we are doing individual discussion so yeah 
that is there. When if we are doing a group discussion, which we are not right now doing, then we need to draw this table and calculate the mean and the range of the data. So we are not doing that right now. Now that we have discussed the table, we have come to the almost towards the end of the experiment, which talks about what exactly happened in this experiment. If you remember, initially we mentioned about points of discussion. So under points of discussion, first point says discuss whether the subject is influenced by suggestion. So that is what we are going to do right now. So uh, first thing under like most, so this is a basic format about how to write a discussion in all the psychology experiments. So at the beginning, we talk about the aim of the experiment. Aim of the experiment is simply but the problem statement. So because the problem statement is the main reason because we have a problem that is the aim and that's what we are going to study in this uh, experiment. So after that, we give a very short description to the about the subject. So here we have mentioned that experiment was administered on SS, 18 year old studying in Christianity College. So yeah, S, uh, we don't mention the name of the subjects because of confidentiality aspect. So instead we mention SS, uh, which is a short initial of the subject. Uh, it actually differs based on subject to subject. So you can decide your own short initials. Then comes uh, a basic description to the table. Uh, the table of, uh, and not only ba like ba just not basic, a clear description. So table one shows the scores of the subject. That is will not be enough. We just have, we also need to mention what is mentioned. So uh, if you see in this uh, discussion, we have mentioned the number of correct responses given under suggestive and how many correct responses are given in non-suggestive. So everything is mentioned along with the difference. So everything is mentioned clearly here. Then I'm giving a very short uh, statement which mentions that the given data shows that the subject has got more number of correct answers in non-suggestive series than in suggestive series. So it, even though it was clear when we were talking about this course, it's very important to make the statement because this is a very important statement or very important aspect in this experiment. Uh, after the statement, I'm mentioning whether we reject or uh, accept the hypothesis. Uh, if you remember at the beginning of the experiment, we mentioned the statement uh, which will be proving or disproving at the end of the experiment. So this is what we are going to do right now. So yeah, therefore the subject SS accepts the hypothesis which states that suggestion reduces the accuracy of the report. Because if you remember, see this, um, because uh, the class, so what had happened is the subject has scored more in non-suggestive and less in suggestive. So suggestion actually had reduced the accuracy of report. So therefore the subject accepts the hypothesis and same thing is mentioned in the conclusion. So with that, we come to the end of the experiment. Uh, if you have any doubts, feel free to call me or message me. So have a nice day. Thank you.